Hey there, welcome back. We are talking all about night wakings. And in this episode, we're gonna be taking a deep dive into one of the reasons that could be behind your little one's night wakings, and that is sleep onset. So I can explain what that is, what it means, and how you really wanna stick around because this could absolutely be the game-changing nugget of wisdom that resolves your little one's sleep in a really, really big way. So stick around um, until the end so you fully understand what sleep onset is all about. So first of all, what does it mean? What does sleep onset even mean? It means the falling to sleep. It's the, the way that sleep comes about. Um, so you know, what, what could that include? When we fall to sleep, our body goes through a certain sensation of closing down, we close our eyes, our breathing becomes slower, and there are all kinds of things that happen to us physiologically and biologically, but there are also external things that happen as well. So once we understand how we're falling to sleep at the sleep onset, it actually plays a really significant role in how we sustain our sleep throughout the night. Now, of course, we do all wake. It's really important to know that nobody just sleeps the whole night through without waking, but the wakings are so minimal. Sometimes you don't even know you've had one. They can be so partial, so um, subconscious, semi-conscious, you just have this slight rouse on back off into sleep. They are cycles of sleep. So you go from, like down into deep sleep, you cycle up, you come through, lie to sleep, and then this is the point where you might just wake up, but oh no, we're back off and we're down into another sleep cycle. We go down, we go into deep sleep, and we cycle through sleep like this all night long. But it's when we're in that lighter sleep that we do actually slightly wake and go back off. We have to, our bodies need to do that to regulate and to keep us alive. And so babies and children are the same, but when they're tiny, when they're really little, and they don't actually know how to get to sleep, and they haven't really grasped the sleep onset yet, when they have those cycles that they're coming into that light sleep and they're you know, just about to tip over into the next cycle, they find themselves awake. And they find themselves awake, they don't know how to get back to sleep because they didn't know how they got there in the first place. And they cry and they look for your help because they need to get back to sleep. So this is why the sleep onset is key because once they're doing it, once their body is just in that rhythm and it knows how and the body just does it and they fall to sleep, it will then have, it will be trained. It will be efficient and effective at going back to sleep when we have those stirrings and wakings in, or partial wakings in the night. I hope that makes sense um, because I know lots of you will feel reassured that, oh, okay, waking up is normal, and it is completely, but it's the getting back to sleep that matters, and when your little one is doing that, they're not going to cry out or look for you or look for help because they're just doing it. So you won't know that they've had two, three, five wakings in the night because they've resettled themselves when they've had those stirrings. And that is when it feels so lovely and like they are sleeping through the night, which is what we all aim for, don't we, for as, as soon as possible. So the thing we need to look at is the sleep onset associations. Now, some people will talk about these as sleep crutches or sleep props, um, and they're not all bad, to be honest. You can have healthy, positive sleep onset associations, as well as unhelpful, destructive sleep onset associations. And it's really important that we know the difference between the two. So a sleep onset association is something that puts a little one to sleep. It, it's something, an association that helps them to go to sleep. But some things will help, whereas other things will do the job for them. For instance, if you rock your baby and you rock, 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 rock all the way to sleep, that's done it for them. It's just done it for them. They haven't really done anything. But if they have a cuddly teddy and they cuddle that teddy, but then they fall to sleep, the teddy's just helped them. It's given them a, a, an element of comfort, but the rest of the job they did and they put themselves to sleep with that cuddling. If they're suckling on a dummy or pacifier all the way to sleep, that might be the thing that's soothing them off to sleep. And this is why when it drops out naturally, because the jaw naturally opens, then they go in, they're fine, they're fine for a while, but then they go into light sleep and they start to 
immediately do that suckling motion and wait, it's gone, it's not there. And what, hang on, something's up and then boom, I'm awake and blah, crying because they're missing that thing that got them to sleep before. However, if they didn't suckle all the way to sleep, maybe they suckled for calming and comfort, but then it goes. If they didn't suckle all the way to sleep, they wouldn't be seeking, their body wouldn't naturally reactively seek that thing in order to get back to sleep. Now, some of these things don't matter at all in the early weeks. With newborns, you can't spoil them and you can't get it wrong. Honestly, instinctively, you're going to rock and cuddle your baby to sleep. You're probably going to feed them to sleep. You're going to do all these things. Please do not worry about that in those early weeks. But an awareness of it will pay dividends because if you're aware of how much you're doing that, you can around four months in, sometimes sooner, but you can start to just spot and be aware of how much you're doing for them and how much they're doing and you can gradually start to tip the scale so you're doing a bit less and they're doing a bit more and they're getting a bit more practice until they get really really good at it but certainly between four and six months i would pay a lot more conscious attention to their sleep onset so you can help them to develop that and for that to come through because so long as you do it for them they'll need you to do it for them and this is why for some parents that goes on for years actual years <laughs> and it's like anything you don't just go oh i'll just wait one day my child will ride a bike no you have to get a bike for them and put the training wheels on and help them and encourage them and run alongside them and bit by bit you take away the wheels and let go and oh look they've got it with sleep onset learning that is the same it, they don't just suddenly go yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna learn that today it's gradual but it needs to be intentional so your awareness as the parent or caregiver is vital in understanding this. So have a think about those sleep onset associations and which ones might be at play in getting your little one to sleep. Is there something that is entirely doing it for them? And if so, could you move a little bit from doing it for them to doing it with them, helping them? and just not but not doing the whole thing so they're doing a little bit of the work and could you then maybe ease up a little bit on your input bit by bit gradually so that they're not left alone to figure it out all by themselves but they've got your assistance they've got your reassurance but they've just got to work a little bit harder at it because you're not going to do the whole job for them is there something that you're thinking of right now that you're like yes ours is ours is this we you know we we feed to sleep we need to stop feeding to sleep okay feed absolutely feed your baby and when they're full make sure they're awake in a little stroke and maybe a little whisper a little song and then make sure they're aware that they're going down to sleep and then use soothing comforting touch and reassurance to help them to finish the job but they will feel that sensation in their body as they drift off and they will get used to that they will get well practiced at that until they can do it on their own so you can practice little ones can practice sleep onset from the early months, they really can, but I would definitely have them practice between four and six months because hopefully then by six months they've mastered their sleep onset. And if they've mastered it, then they're going to be able to settle to sleep when they fall to sleep, which means they will sustain the amount of sleep they need. For naps, no more 30 minutes and I'll home awake again. They will sleep on and they'll do their full cycles until they're done. And nights, they will cycle through, wake up, back off to sleep, wake up, back off to sleep, and you won't even hear from them because they're efficiently going through their cycles themselves without needing the help anymore because they've got it. So practice is key. So guys, that is my quick one on sleep onset for you. If you have any questions, please reach out to us here on the YouTube channel, on the social media channels. We're here to answer your questions anytime if we can help you. And stand by for my next episode where I'm gonna be talking about another night waking hazard, which is when little ones wake up for long stretches in the night and they're just awake for ages and it's like why what's going on so we're going to delve into that one in my next episode i will see you there in the meantime take care and sleep soundly thanks so much for watching if you've liked anything about this episode then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this if any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video then please do share it with them using the hashtag the sleep nanny and we look forward to seeing you again real soon